everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back to talk about all of the fragrances that I wore last week. So yeah, I did a bunch of testing of a lot of the new things that I've picked up recently, and I've got some old favorites in here as well. Um, I was on a coconut kick last week, and um, you can see I'm feeling, I'm starting to get into more fall fragrances. So some of these I'm jumping straight to just like fall, not even transition, which I'm gonna be putting out my transition uh, video my part one this week. So, but anyways, I'm going to jump right in. The first one that we're going to talk about is this one here. This is a fragrance from Giles Cantuel and it is called Arsenal Woman. Um, woman? Yeah. Or women. W-O-M-E-N. So women. I love this bottle. It's got all these pretty, um, like beads. They're round. They're like little round beads in the bottle or in the bottom. To me, this smells like caramelized berries. It's got some berries in the top, it's got some light florals in the middle, and then it's got caramel in the base, for sure. And that's what it smells like. It smells like really beautiful, warm, caramelized berries. This is a great transition fragrance. Um, you won't see it in my transition videos because I've already got those all those fragrances pulled, but this would make a great transition fragrance because it is light enough that it's not gonna like choke you out in the heat, but it's got that really warm, caramely base, so you get those really super cozy fall vibes without like having a super heavy fragrance. So yeah, it's really, really nice. It doesn't last that long on the skin. I will say I got maybe two hours out of this or so. It wears very close as well. It's not a projector at all. Like you're gonna get almost no projection out of this. Um, somebody would probably smell it when you first sprayed it on for maybe, I don't know, the first 10 minutes and then it's just going to wear very close to the skin. You will smell it for, again, a couple, of, a couple of hours and then you will have to reapply. I reapplied it once, so I sprayed it on initially, reapplied it once, and then after it wore off the second time, I moved on to another fragrance but I really, really enjoy it. Um, I'm very glad I picked it up. It's a super affordable little gem, and yeah, I wanna say it was like 10 bucks or something um, if you get the tester bottle like I did. So that is the first one. That is called Arsenal w Women from Giles Cantuel. Okay, next, this is what I'm talking, oh, and before I move on from Arsenal, I do wanna just say, to mention, that I am testing this in high heat. It was 90 degrees yesterday, and that's when I wore, was it yesterday? No, I think I wore it day before yesterday. Yesterday. Either way, it was, I think even day before yesterday, it was close to 90 degrees. So it was pretty hot. Um, I'm definitely going to revisit this as it starts to cool down. I have a feeling it will perform a lot better. I feel like it's just the heat that's eating it up so quickly. Um, so yeah, definitely stay tuned for um, an update on this as it starts to get cooler. Okay, and then with this next one, you're definitely going to see where I'm really craving these kind of heavy uh, fall winter fragrances. The next one I wore is this one here. This is Rentless from Lush and oh my gosh, it's so good. This is a sweet, heavy tonka and patchouli fragrance. It's so good. It's, it is patchouli, but it's really, really smoothed out by the tonka. So it's not that medicinal patchouli. It's not a hippie patchouli. It's not like a green patchouli. It's not an earthy patchouli. It's, it's like a syrupy, it's almost that syrupy chocolatey patchouli, like almost that syrupy chocolate cake patchouli that you get in the reminiscence patchouli. It's almost that kind of a patchouli because it's sweet and the tonka smooths it out so much. It's beautiful. It's a sweet, thick, dense, um, yeah, a sweet, thick, dense, syrupy tonka and patchouli. That's really all you've got here. There's not a lot. Um, this isn't a super complex fragrance. It's you're not going to go on a journey with it. It's gonna. It's pretty linear. It smells exactly the same from the time you spray it on until the deep dry down. So you're not going to get you know much out of this except for what you smell in the bottle. And I love it. This quickly became my favorite Lush fragrance in my collection. And yeah, I just love it. This one sadly is really hard to find now. I think last time I talked about this fragrance, I went to link it uh, in that video and I 
think that I remember it not being on the Lush website anymore. So I was really sad about that. Um, so yeah, this one is it's seeming like it's difficult to come by at this point. Um, I would check the gray market, eBay and Mercari. I got my bottle off of Mercari. Um, so yeah, that's probably gonna be your best bet with this one, but it's a stunner. So anyways, that is Lush Rentless. Okay, next we've got this one. This was one that, this is a fragrance that I just picked up and I was questioning if I was even gonna keep it or not. Um, this is a fragrance from Women's Secrets and this is, this is called Rose Seduction. So this one gets compared to Livia Bell. I don't think this is a Livia Bell dupe. I think it's something more like, um, and it's not a flower bomb dupe either. This, it's got way too much vanilla in it. That's what it dries down to is this really beautiful sweet vanilla base. There is a touch of patchouli in it. It's not the same amount of patchouli that you get in Livia Belle or Flower Bomb. This one is much more vanilla heavy. It's definitely not a groundbreaking fragrance. It definitely smells like a bunch of other fragrances out there but it's a really, really nice formulation. I'm definitely gonna keep it in my collection. I will say this one doesn't last very long. Um, the Manifesto dupe from this company lasts a lot longer. I can get a good five, six hours out of this one, uh, or out of that one. This one you can only get a few hours out of. I think I got about three hours out of this before I had to reapply it, which I did. I did just go ahead and reapply it, but I really like this one. I really like how this works on my skin. Um, I really like what it smells like when it dries down. I just like everything about it. It's really smooth and pleasant and sweet. Um, it's pretty vanilla heavy and I love vanilla. So yeah, it's a super nice one. I have not been disappointed with anything from this house and this is such an affordable little cheapy house that just makes some great fragrances. I really like them. So anyways, that is Women's Secret Rose Seduction. Next, we've got this one. I I debated even talking about this because I'm wearing it so often at this point that um, I'm it would end up in every single one of these videos. So I'm thinking maybe once a month I'll talk about it or something just to, I guess, remind you guys that I'm still wearing it a ton. This is why I sell Libre Intense and I've just been addicted to this fragrance for the last, I don't know, couple months now. I've been wearing it to bed a lot. You can see I'm getting quite a big dent in this. This is my backup bottle. And I am, I've got quite a large dent in it now because I'm just wearing it a lot. I love this perfume. It's so, it's buttery. It's a buttery, sweet orange blossom and lavender and it's beautiful. I love it. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I talk about it all the time and yeah, I'm just obsessed with it. So anyways, that is why I sell Libre. Okay, next I pulled this guy out. I have not worn this in a long time. I saw it sitting there and I was like, ooh, I'm ready for you. This is the Ganache Parfums Vanilla and Tonka Bean and oh my gosh, it's so good. It's definitely much, it definitely smells like a tonka bean perfume and it's smoothed out by the vanilla. It's not an overly sweet vanilla, so it's definitely not like a gourmand vanilla. It's not like a, it's not a sweet dessert like vanilla. It's, oh gosh, it's so good. Yeah, it's hardly sweet at all. In fact, it's mostly tonka with kind of a smooth silky like with the maybe just the slightest touch of sweetness vanilla it's pretty simple that's all it is is vanilla and tonka it's not complex at all um, and because of that i wanted to go ahead and layer an oil under it so the oil that i pulled out to layer under it is this one from solstice Sense. this is called conjure and conjure is beautiful Conjure is slightly resinous. It's a little bit spiced. It's very slightly sweet. This is another one that's not very sweet at all. Let me get this on my... Uh, yeah, it's mostly just spiced and resinous. It's so good. It's a, just maybe the slightest touch smoky. But just think like frankincense, myrrh, and maybe some spices, um, cardamom, maybe a little bit of pepper or something. It's that kind of a fragrance. I don't even remember what the notes in this one are, but it's like a spiced resinous fragrance. And um, 
layered with the vanilla and tonka bean fragrance. It was beautiful. It was warm and fall-like, but without being overly sweet or gourmand, which is exactly what I was looking for. So beautiful combination. I will definitely be doing this one again. So that is tonka bean and vanilla or sorry, vanilla and tonka bean from Ganache Parfums and Conjure from Solstice Scents. Beautiful combination. Okay, I got on a coconut kick last week. So I've got three different, well, four different coconut scents, but one that I wore in kind of a strange way, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, the first one, the first coconut scent that I wore this week though was this one here. This is from the Sage Lifestyle and this is the scent called Onyx. So I keep this little oil in its box because the box is just, the little package is so cute. Um, so this is my little Onyx oil. These are quite expensive. These little oils are, I want to say they're, mm, I want to say they're in the $40 range. If I, it's been a long time since I bought this, but oh my gosh, this is one of the best coconuts. I think this is the best coconut I've gotten in my, in my collection, hands down. This is a dark coconut. It's sweet, but it's dark. I think it's got some sandalwood in it and tobacco. Oh man, so it's a sweet coconut, but with sandalwood and tobacco in the base that really ground it and keep it from smelling. It doesn't smell beachy. It doesn't smell suntan lotion-y. It doesn't smell youthful. It smells very, very elevated, very much like a grown woman's coconut. Um, it's super classy, so nice. And I also have this little half ounce bottle of perfume that I layer over it. And when I layer these two, I can get eight, 10, 12 hours out of this fragrance. This is one that this, the day that I wore this, I couldn't, I definitely wasn't able to apply anything else. And I still could smell it on myself the next morning when I woke up, it didn't go away until I took a shower. So this little combination is an absolute beast and I love it. It Again, it's my favorite coconut fragrance in my collection. There's just something so sultry and beautiful and grown woman smelling about it. I just love it. So anyways, that is the Sage Lifestyle Onyx. Okay, next I tested both of my new Kumba Made coconut oils. So I've got black coconut here, which this one, I thought it had sandalwood in it. It doesn't have sandalwood. Um, it's got chocolate in it. It's like coconut and dark chocolate. Oh gosh, it's like a powdery dark chocolate too, so it doesn't smell synthetic. It smells like coconut and hot cocoa. It's really, really beautiful. It's not overly sweet at all. And then I've got creamy coconut, and creamy coconut is more of a typical coconut vanilla combination. It's much more gourmand smelling. It's much more, um, it's lighter. So what I did, because I wanted to test them both and I knew it was later in the week, so I knew I wasn't gonna have time to test them like one on one day and another on another day. And these are both beast co coconut oils, so I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to like test one and let it wear off and then test the other. So I put, <laughs> I put black coconut on one side of my body and I put creamy coconut on the other side of my body and tested them that way. So I was able to like go this way if I wanted to smell creamy coconut, go this way if I wanted to smell black coconut, and I was able to kind of you know, wear them both at the same time. They're really, really similar. I wasn't getting a whole bunch of difference. The only difference is this one, again, is a little bit darker smelling. It's got that chocolate in it, but the chocolate does end up just kind of fading away and you're left with basically just a coconut scent. And that's how they both are. It ended up drying down. Both of them ended up drying down to smelling pretty darn similar and um, yeah, it definitely didn't wear smell like I was wearing two different perfumes. It was just this really nice coconut. So yeah, I love both of them. I could very easily recommend both of them. Um, I think I like the black coconut just a little bit better because it's a little bit more interesting with the chocolate in it, but they're both really, really great oils and very, very long lasting coconut oils and very affordable as well. They're like 10, 10 60 maybe. Um, regular price, but if you wait for some kind of a sale, I think I got them for about $8 or 
yeah, probably right around $8 a piece because I did a, I waited for a 25% off sale. So anyways, that is Kumba made black coconut and Kumba made creamy coconut. And then the last coconut fragrance I wore is this one here. This is the Laura Mercier Almond Coconut. This is an eau de toilette formulation. Um, this is another really kind of grown smelling coconut, like grown woman smelling coconut. It doesn't, this one's not juvenile smelling at all. It's very, yeah, it's not a sweet coconut. This fragrance is not sweet at all. It's like a dry, well, not dry. It's like a... It's like an unsweet, very natural, fresh, watery coconut and a powdery almond fragrance. And it's really beautiful. It ends up being very light and um, airy. It's not heavy at all. And you can layer this basically over any kind of coconut oil and it will smell great. I just wore it on its own. Um, it wore off after a few hours and I was able to go ahead and reapply something else. But yeah, it's really nice. This one just does not last very long at all. I was hoping that this would perform more like the Ombre Vigny fragrance that I've got from Laura Mercier, but unfortunately it just, it doesn't. That fragrance is a beast. It will last forever. This is the reformulated version of this scent. I've never tried the original formulation, so I would bet that the original formulation performs a whole lot better than this, but yeah, this one just doesn't perform well, but I'm so obsessed with it that um, I don't care. If I wanted to smell like this all day, I would just keep reapplying it, even though it's kind of pricey. Um, I just, I love it. I think it's such a beautiful coconut scent. So anyways, that is Laura Mercier Almond Coconut. And then last but not least, I was, I had a vanilla day where I just wanted to smell like a yummy vanilla, like just yummy, simple gourmand vanilla fragrance. So I put this lotion on here. This is, I ordered a sample of this from Coco Pink. This is the Coco Mango Body Butter, and I picked it up in the fragrance Triple Vanilla Dream, which is Triple Vanilla Dream. It's like a mix of three different vanillas, like, oh gosh, I think it's Tahota Vanilla Bean Noel, and I can never remember the third vanilla, but it's a beautiful vanilla lotion. The scent of the lotion hangs around for a couple of hours, and then it does kind of fade away, but the lotion itself is beautiful. It keeps you moisturized until you take a shower the next day. Like it's such a good lotion. And the fragrance that I layered over it is this one here. This is the Frank Boclet Vigny fragrance. This is such a good fragrance. I will tell you, this is a great summer vanilla. And in fact, I'm about to do a summer vanilla fragrance video and this will definitely be in it because this is a great summer vanilla. It's a really beautiful, sweet, but not overly sweet vanilla. This smells like a key lime pie to me. That's what I say every time I talk about this fragrance. It smells like a key lime pie to me because it's got a really, really strong lime note in the top that goes throughout the entire fragrance and it's there the entire wear time. Um, the lime never goes away. So because of that, it ends up smelling like this beautiful key lime pie fragrance and I love it. It's because it's so citrus heavy, it just makes such a great warm weather vanilla and I love it. The only problem is even though it smells great in the heat, it doesn't perform great in the heat. It definitely performs way, way better in cooler weather, um, but I just like to wear it more in the heat. So I wear this one all year round. I will definitely wear this in the cold weather, but I just think it's a great summer vanilla option because it's got it because it's so lime heavy. Um, yeah, it just doesn't perform well in the heat. I think I got maybe three hours out of this. Um, I got ready and I sprayed this, I put the lotion on, I sprayed this on, I went to town with it, probably 10, 12 sprays. We left the house, we went and got some lunch, we drove around and looked at some RV parks and then by the time we got home, which that maybe took us, I don't know, a couple hours and by the time we got home, um, I really couldn't smell it anymore. So yeah, I'm thinking I got maybe three hours tops out of this before I would have needed to reapply. Um, I don't think I reapplied this. I think I put something else on. I can't really remember what, but I think I put something else on. But yeah, I do still love this and I think it's a great summer or a hot weather vanilla fragrance. So anyways, that is Frank Boclet Vigny. 
and that is going to be it guys those are all of the fragrances that i wore last week i do hope that you enjoyed this if you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe before you leave and i will see you in my next one bye